Getting started with dynamic content and WordPress can be incredibly daunting. And while I have a lot of content covering this on the channel, I want to take a step back for those who are new to the concept. In this video, I'll cover the foundations of what dynamic content is, and then we'll look at how to start working with the core concepts in a real world scenario. Now, if you don't know a metaphor from a taxonomy and the thought of custom post types just leaves you cold, then this video is going to be perfect for you. Now let's start with some basic WordPress terminology to help clear up some of the confusion that you may be feeling. Let's start by defining the difference between static and dynamic content. Static content on a website is content that doesn't change based upon things like the time of day, the viewer's location, those kinds of things. Whereas dynamic content can change due to any number of different reasons. For example, the viewer's location, logged in status, save preferences, or a blog listing page. Now, generally, a WordPress page will contain static content, pages like about page, contact page, and so on. Now you can open up the blog page and this has a list of recent blog posts that are dynamically generated based upon the blog category that you chose. The same holds true for a news section on a WordPress website. Click on the news page or the news category and the list of available content will be generated dynamically. When you add content to a WordPress website, that information is stored in a database. When a page or post is requested by a website user, the database is queried for that particular content based upon the link that you clicked, and that is output to the user or your browser. The page or post is created based upon a template that includes common elements like the header, footer, sidebar, navigation, those kinds of things. There are also placeholders in the template for the content and includes things like the post or page title, the content itself, the featured image, those kinds of things. The main reason is that it makes your job of not only building websites, but also maintaining them considerably easier and faster. For example, if you want to add new content to a website, you don't want to have to go to the time and effort of creating a new page made up of pretty much the exact same elements that we just talked about, headers, footers, sidebars, those kinds of things. You don't do that from scratch when you'd just be much easier to just change the actual main content itself and leave all those things in their normal places. Now, there are numerous ways, but I would imagine most of you are here to learn how to use a page builder alongside WordPress and some other tools to expand your skills and start using dynamic content in future projects. In this guide, I'll show you how to get started using the most popular page builder right now, Elementor Pro. But you can easily use other page builders like Divi or Beaver Thema once you have the core concepts I'll be covering locked in. Posts form the backbone of WordPress content or content structure. No matter what type of content you add to WordPress, it's considered and treated as a post. So for example, you have WordPress posts and pages. Both of these are treated as post types in WordPress. While they operate in a very similar fashion, there are some simple yet significant differences between them. For example, posts by default have options for grouping similar or related content together, and these are commonly referred to as taxonomies. We'll have more on that in the next section. On the other hand, pages don't have this option as standard. Although using some of the tools I'll cover in this tutorial, you could easily add them in if you wanted to. However, for this tutorial, let's concentrate on the standard and non-modified features in a normal WordPress setup. Now, posts also provide a featured image, whereas pages generally have no use for this feature. To take this one step further, a common plugin, WooCommerce, allows you to easily add products with a whole range of options and features that look far more complex than those offered by our posts and pages. However, WordPress still considers WooCommerce products to be a post type. Now, once you wrap your head around how WordPress effectively treats all content types like posts, you can start to see the common elements that make up so many different features that can be added to WordPress through plugins and some more fully featured themes. Now, I will admit that it took me quite a while to get the term taxonomy just to stick in my head. So let me break the term down and hopefully provide some clarity on what taxonomies are and why they are proved so useful. Now, a taxonomy within WordPress is simply a way of grouping posts, custom or otherwise, together. 
By default, WordPress's posts have two taxonomies associated with them that you are probably already familiar with, categories and tags, as simply taxonomies or ways of applying simple grouping options to your posts. Now, the real beauty of taxonomies is that you can use them to group your posts into logical sets and depending on how you create your taxonomies, you can group things in a very simple fashion or create hierarchical groupings that let you create more complex relationships between your posts. Another added benefit of taxonomies is that you can apply them, change them, apply a post to multiple taxonomies and so much more. It's a very flexible method of adding form and organization to your content structure on a WordPress website. Now, using WooCommerce as our main example again, you can take your products, a custom post type, and group them based upon the manufacturer, an example of a taxonomy, a product type, or a million and one other related factors to provide both the website administrator and the website visitor a logical way of organizing, navigating, and viewing the content. Again, once you become comfortable with not only the concept of taxonomies, but also how you can take some of the tools I'll be covering here and build incredibly sophisticated websites with relative ease, you'll see a whole world of possibilities unfold before your eyes. Meta fields, or as often referred to as custom fields, make up a large portion of the functionality provided by WordPress. If we use our posts as an example, you are probably more than familiar with fields like the title field, the content field, or the featured image field. These are all meta fields. As previously mentioned, we can use a range of tools to add additional meta or custom fields to our existing core WordPress post types or augment the likes of WooCommerce products with additional meta fields. However, we can also go much further by creating our own custom post types, custom taxonomies, and then add custom meta fields to any or all of those with relative ease. So now we've ticked off some of the key terminologies. Let's start exploring some of the tools we have at our disposal to be able to expand what the core WordPress tools actually offer us. Let's start by looking at how we can take the built-in features of WordPress and add in some of our own custom meta fields. Before we do though, let's quickly discuss what tools we have available to us to do this. Now, the main contenders are Advanced Custom Fields or ACF, which offers a very well spec free version as well as a premium option with a selection of additional meta field types. On top of that, we also have Metabox, Toolset, Pods and Jet Engine. Now, all Bar Pods are premium plugins that carry a price tag and offer a similar set of features. However, once you become accustomed to the way in which these types of tools work, you'll be able to take your skills and knowledge and use that to transition between tools with relative ease. If you want to learn more about any of these tools and anything else we'll be using in this tutorial, I put links in the description for your ease. Okay, let's take this information and start to put it together in a practical example using advanced custom fields, the free version. I'd encourage you to grab a copy for yourself, install it on a test website and follow along with me. This will help cement the process in your mind as I go through the basics. If you're ready, let's open up WordPress and get the ball rolling. Now, once you've gone ahead and installed advanced custom fields, you're going to have a new entry in your dashboard called custom fields. Inside there, we have three options. And what we're interested in for this tutorial is the add new option. This allows us to create a new field group. And all a field group is, is a collection of meta fields grouped together under a common heading. You can then apply that group to any of your posts or custom post types, which we'll take a look at a little later. And you can have as many field groups containing as many meta fields as you need. So you have a lot of scope and flexibility to create any kind of setup that you want using meta fields. For our example today, we're going to keep this really simple and just create one field group. So to start off with, let's give this a name and we're just going to call this added fields. Underneath that, we've got the place where we can create our actual individual meta fields. We're going to come back to that in a moment because I want to show you the location before we take a look at adding fields in. Now, the location is where we can choose how and where to apply this group of meta fields when we create them. So let's take a quick look. We've got three different sections and we can build up multiple different rules if you want to create more comprehensive layouts using your field groups. First of all, you can see show the field group if, and this is basically where we check things. So at the moment it says show the field group if a post type 
but we have lots of options. We have templates, status, post formats, categories, taxonomies. We can also reference pages, users, forms, tons of different options. We're gonna keep this really simple though. We're gonna leave this set to be post type. Then you can see it says equal to. We have equal to, always not equal to. Pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna leave this to is equal to, and then we can choose what we want it to be equal to. You can see we have post, page, landing page, and so on. However, if you change options inside here, so for example, we say current user, you'll see we have a different set of options. If we choose something like a taxonomy form, you'll see again, we have different options inside there. So this is just a way of easily being able to compare what you want and making sure that it actually matches that up. So post type is equal to post is perfectly fine. We don't need any additional rules, so we can leave that where it is. The settings section gives us some additional options on how we can actually place and how we want certain things to work. We don't need to worry too much about this. You can pretty much leave all the default options if you want to. You can see we can set this to be active so we could disable this particular group if we wanted to without deleting it. And we can then choose the style. We have a couple of different options on how this will be displayed when we create our field group and then when it's applied to the particular post type. We'll leave those options as they are. You can see one thing that is incredibly useful though is the hide on screen option. Now this relates to all the normal things you'd see in a typical WordPress post. Things like the permalink, the content editor, the title, author, and all those kinds of things. So you can choose to hide any of these options that you don't feel is relevant if you want to create your own custom meta fields and you want to slim down what you see inside the post itself. I'm gonna leave all those as they are, they're perfectly fine. So once we've set up those basic things, we now come back up to choose our fields. So let's open up the add field option. And inside there, this now opens up a context window. And all that really means is, depending upon the kind of field type or the meta field that you choose to create, you will see different options inside you. So for example, if we take a look at where it says text, which is the current field type, if we change that to something like image, you'll see that now changes and gives us a different set of options. Again, if we change this to something like number, you can see again, we get different options. There are certain things that are consistent throughout all these different kinds of meta fields, the field label, the field name, the field type, instructions and so on. However, certain options will change based upon the context. So let's set this back to be text and we'll create our first meta field. It's going to be another option. It's going to be property type. So we'll just add in property type. Now this is two separate words, so you'll see once I click underneath, this will automatically, even though you probably can't see it there, it'll show you it puts an underscore in so it doesn't put that space in and everything, like I say, is all lowercase. So now what you can do is we can check a different type of field. So now we could come in and we say we want to use a select field. We'll enable that and you can see this now gives us the ability to put in choices and default values and also some other things to do with how we deal with this. So let's set the choices now that we want to include in our select field. Now I'm simply going to copy and paste these in. So you can see I've got house, apartment, flat and condo. Now you can see that if you take a look at the notes, we can also put two different values in there. So we can set the value for the value and the label itself. However, if you just put one entry in, and this just saves a little bit of work, it will use that for both the value and the label. So this is just a quick and easy way of doing it. If you want to set a default value, you can do that inside there. And you can also do things like allow null. In other words, someone doesn't have to choose it. You can say select multiple values. So if you had something that multiple different choices would make sense, in this case, it doesn't because it's a property. And also you can do things like stylized uh, UI, return format. You can see we can set this to go value, label, or both. We're going to say the return value is going to be label. And again, you've got your conditional logic. So the only other thing I want to do now is set this to be a required field. So anybody that's actually inserted some content will have to choose one of these options. And okay, there we go. That's that side of things done. So now we can close this down or we can simply hit publish. Once we do that, we've now done everything we need to be able to create our first meta field group. We've created our custom meta fields and we've also assigned that now to be used specifically with the posts, the normal posts inside WordPress. If we head over and take a look at a post, you can see we have all the normal options at the top, the title, the content, featured image and things like that on the right hand side, tags, categories and so on. But also we have this new section underneath goal now called added fields. And you can see we've got price, location and our property type. And we've got a drop down. Unfortunately, you can't see all of this because it's going off screen, but hopefully you can see the first couple. So we've set the basics up. Now, what about if you made a mistake? So for example, where we've got this price, 
people are not going to necessarily know what kind of currency we might be working with. Can we change this? Can we go back and retrospectively update and change things? Absolutely. Let's go back to our field group. Let's open our price field up. And what we're going to do is scroll down and we're going to set the option for prepend. And we're simply going to put in the currency, in this case, the pound sign. And then we're going to come up, save this, hop back over to our page or our post, I should say, and refresh that. You can see now we've got the pound sign in there. So anybody that sees this knows that that's the value we're working with. So it's really easy. And again, if you want to reorder any of these, you can simply come back in and you can see that when we come over the number, we can easily just drag these into the position that we want, hit update, hop back over to our post, we'll refresh this. And now we can see our property type is the first option. And if we click to expand, you can see there's all of our different options inside there. So that's how easy it is to create your first custom meta field group and apply that to the normal default WordPress post type. And then you have access to all of this additional data. Now we've seen how to add in a selection of custom fields to the standard WordPress post type. What's next? Well, the next logical step is to move away from simply adding custom meta fields to the existing tools in WordPress and start adding in our own custom post type or CPT. Before we do though, let's just briefly discuss why you may want to use a custom post type over a standard WordPress post. Well, let's use a simple example, a real estate website. Well, you could add in a load of extra fields for your properties and all the extra information that would be required for a detailed listing. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to do it that way. What you'll be doing is trying to fit a square peg into a round hole by using the normal WordPress post features and organizational options with tags and categories, the taxonomies used by the default WordPress setup. So this is where it makes more sense to create your own custom post type and label all the features accordingly. For example, it would make more sense to use the term property instead of post. So we'd have add a new property or edit property. You kind of get the idea. Okay, so let's see how we can do that now. But before we do though, we need to add in a free plugin to let us add in the new post type with ACF. Now, if you're using any of the other plugins mentioned earlier, you don't need to use this extra plugin as they all have built-in options for creating custom post types. As we're getting started, ACF is both free and widely supported, and that's why I'm demonstrating things using that here today. Now, I do have full tutorials on all the other options, so once you've worked through this tutorial, you can take a look at those, and it will be linked in the description to all those videos. Okay, let's install the plugin and start making our first custom post type. With custom post type UI or CPT UI installed, we have an entry in the dashboard. Inside there, we have several different options. We only really need to worry about the very first two, which is where we can set up our custom post types and a little later, how we can create our taxonomies. So first of all, let's add a new custom post type. Now, we took a look in the first section at how we create some simple meta fields, group them together, and then assign those to our normal post type. And that's okay if you've got just some simple options. But when we come to work with something like creating properties, we want to have a way of having its own dedicated terminology, its own dedicated post type, and then be able to assign various different things to it, like taxonomies, which we'll take a look at soon. So this is where we go ahead and create our custom post type. So the first thing we have are the basic settings. And inside here, we can set up the post slug. Now, this might sound a little bit confusing if you're not too sure what the term slug means. It's just literally what gets added to the URL, you know, your .com forward slash something like pages, posts, properties, books, those kinds of things. It's called a slug in the terms that are used inside WordPress. So the first thing we're going to do is give it a post term slug. So we're going to call this properties. Underneath that, you can see we've got the plural label and the singular label. So plural is going to be properties. Single is going to be property. Okay, we could literally leave it at this point if we wanted to and just add our post type and that would create a new custom post type. However, we do have some more options, most of which are purely optional and most of which you can pretty much ignore. But let me just quickly go through them so you can see what we're talking about. You can see we have a section called additional labels. Now the labels are effectively what you will see in various different parts of the dashboard of WordPress. Things like when you hover over, like for example, we've got all posts, add new categories and so on. On. And in here, you can set things up like the menu name, the all items name, the all add new, the add new item and so on. So you could do things like menu name could be properties, all items could be view all properties, that kind of thing. So if you want to customize these or change the language completely, you could do that directly inside here. You don't need to, purely optional. So we're going to leave all those as they are. 
We're going to scroll right the way down until we get to the settings section. Now the settings has some important things and we can set things up inside here just to make our lives just a little bit easier. Now I'm not going to bog you down by explaining every single function inside the settings. I'm just going to show you the things that are key and important when you create a custom post type and things you need to take into consideration. So the most important thing is we need to make sure that we can use this inside the archive that we're going to create a little later. Now don't worry if you don't know what the archive is. It's a template we're going to set up. I'll explain it at the time, but we do need to make sure that we can use this custom post type with an archive. This is one of the most common problems that people come across is when they come to creating the template they can't actually create it and assign it to their custom post type because they haven't told it that they want to use an archive with their custom post type seems a bit crazy but it's important and it needs to be set up inside you so you can see we have an option that says has archive we all just need to set that to be true that's it that's all we need to do okay so that's the key most important thing a couple of other things that are there that are useful hierarchical and all this basically means is that we can have a hierarchy or a structure to the way our custom post types work we're not going to use them in a lot of instances but what it does is it makes it much more usable inside wordpress itself without setting this to be true we have to know exactly what the name of any of our custom post types is going to be this comes really important when you're working with taxonomies so this is something that is easier just to set to be true you can set it forget it and benefit from where this is useful throughout the interface Okay, so a couple of other things we can do. We can set the menu position if you want to control exactly where this is going to display inside the left-hand side. You can set this to show in menu, and this is at the top where we've got new. It'll allow us to have add new, in this example, properties. Can be useful. You can set that to true if you want to. You can also set a custom menu icon. If you want to do that, you can do that inside there. We can then choose what this particular custom post type supports. Now, if you remember back when we took a look at the meta fields, we had exactly the same options inside there. But in that case, inside ACF Pro, that was a case of choosing what you want to hide. In the case of creating a custom post type, it's what you want to show. So what this basically means is any meta fields we assign to this custom post type will be in addition to anything we choose inside this supports. So we're gonna leave the title, the editor, and the featured image all set up. We're also going to enable the excerpt option. Everything else we're gonna leave disabled. You come down, you can see you've got other things like you've got supports and taxonomies. We don't need to worry about those right now. So we've pretty much set everything we need to inside here. Okay, so with that all being said, what we're gonna do is scroll back up to the top, open this top panel up and say, add our post type. And now our new custom post type of properties has been created and you can see there's all properties and add new. And if we go into view all properties, you can see this will give us the title and the date. And if we come into add a new one, you can see we've got the title, we've got the content and we have the featured image. And we also have the excerpt. Everything else has been disabled because we didn't choose those options. However, if you want to, we can go back and edit that. So let's go back out of this, come back into CPT UI, choose add edit post types, and you come to this blank page, which can cause a little bit of confusion. All you need to do is come up to the second tab where it says edit post type, click on there, and then any post types you created will be listed in this drop down. We can just open that up, select the one we want, and then we can make any changes we want to this. So let's just say, for example, we don't really want to use that option for the excerpt. We can simply come in, disable that, save our post type, and we're done. Now that we've created our new custom post type, the next thing we need to consider is if and how to organize things with taxonomies. We'll stick with the properties example and look at how to easily organize our content into logical groups. This is a good time to consider how you want to organize your new data and then plan things out ahead of adding them. Why? Mainly because you don't want to spend time adding in taxonomies that don't help in the organization, but also because once you add in your taxonomies, removing the actual data from the database is just a bit of a nuisance. So it's best to spend those extra few moments just planning things out ahead of time. Now for our example, we'll keep things really simple and choose to add a taxonomy called property types and use that to group our properties by the type of property for sale. So for example, houses, flats, or apartments. You kind of get the idea of where I'm coming from with this. Now you're in no way limited to only one taxonomy. You have the ability to add as many as you wish, but for ease of use and speed, try to limit yourself to only those that are technically required or that make sense for the project you're working on. Okay, so let's open up CPT UI and get started creating our very first taxonomy. 
Now, if you remember back when we created our simple meta field group, we created a select field inside there that we set to be the property type. Perfectly fine if you want to do that, but there are some limitations by setting that up as part of a normal meta field. It makes more sense to set that up as a custom taxonomy. And again, we can use custom post type or CPT UI to do exactly that. I'm going to come back to the CPT UI entry. This time we're going to choose the add edit taxonomies. We'll select that. And you can see we now have a simple set of options. So the first thing we need to do is create the taxonomy slug. Now we've already covered slugs when we deal with the making a custom post type and it works and holds true in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this property type. And again, you can see we can't use spaces. We have to use underscores and it will automatically add the underscore when you put a space in there. Then you've got your plural label. So again, we're gonna do property types and we'll just copy that from there and we'll put property type in for the singular. Okay, so that's the first bits of information. The next thing we need to do is choose what post type do we want to attach this custom taxonomy to. So it's a property. So we're gonna add it to the properties custom post type we just created. We'll select that. And we could, if we want to, just say add the taxonomy here. But again, like we saw before, there's additional options for the labels. If you want to customize those, I'm going to leave them as they are for the default. However, if we scroll down to the settings, there are a couple of things inside here we do want to set up. Again, from a usability point of view and sometimes from a functionality point of view. So you can see we can set this to be public, queryable, those kinds of things. Hierarchical, we want to set that up inside here. So again, this is more from a ease of use case in this example, but there are gonna be a lot of times where you do want to have a structure, a hierarchy inside there. Next up, we're gonna just come down and we're gonna choose the option to make our lives just a little easier when we're adding or editing content. And this is where we can come in and do things like show admin columns. We're gonna say, yes, we wanna set that to true. So this custom taxonomy, for the property types will now display inside our custom properties listing. We'll take a look at that in a moment. So once we've done that, We've got another option, which is show in quick bulk edit panel. And if you are a user like me that likes to use that quick edit option when you're editing posts or custom posts and so on, this just makes life a lot easier. So again, we're going to set that to be true just so that displays inside there and makes our life just a little easier. Now we can, if we want, leave everything else set as it is inside here. Those are just some of the key things we do need to change just for a usability point of view. With that being said, once we've done that, we'll hit add taxonomy. And now if we come over to our properties, we will have a new entry called property types. Click to expand that. And you can see we now have a normal way of working with any kind of taxonomy and we can set up anything we want to group things together inside here. So while we're inside our custom taxonomy, let's just add in a couple of entries. So first of all, we'll start off with house. And you can see if we want to set up a hierarchy, we can do that inside here. We'll just say add a new property. We'll add apartment. I'll add a new property and I'll just add a couple more inside here just so when we create some content add into our new property types we'll have some actual categories to group things together under and there we go we now have a couple of different property types that we can use that's the basic groundwork covered so now it's time to take all the new information we've added to our WordPress site and see how this looks and add some sample information before we dig in and add the final piece to the puzzle outputting all our custom information with Elementor Pro so now we need to add just a little bit of content, some sample content, so we have something to work with. There's a little bit of housekeeping I want to do beforehand though. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into the custom fields and into our field groups, and there's our added fields. Let's just open that up. Now currently that's still set to be linked to the post type of posts. We don't have anything linked to our new custom post type. So let's rectify that. We're gonna change this from post type is equal to post, and we're gonna set this is equal to the new current custom option, which is property. So now that will associate this meta field group with our new property custom post type. Now, obviously we just created a custom taxonomy to group things together under the property type. So we no longer need this entry. So we're gonna simply delete this from here, choose to remove it, and we'll just say update. Let's now head over to our properties and view all our properties. And you see currently there's nothing there, but our new custom taxonomy property types is listed in the center. Let's come into add new. And inside there, we now have the title, we have the content, the featured image. We have our new taxonomy called property type and all our property types listed inside there. And we also have the added field for price and location. So everything is now set up ready for us to add some new sample data in. So let's just add in some sample data just so I can quickly show you how this all works. Let's give this a title and we'll just call this London Heights. We'll just drop in a little bit of placeholder text. 
and then we're going to come in and set our price so this is going to be half a million and the location we'll just pop in london for now but you could put a full address inside there if you wanted to come back over to the right hand side and now we can choose what kind of property this is so we're going to say this is an apartment and we're going to apply a featured image just by clicking and i'm going to quickly just upload a couple of images that we can use as the basis for this property and then i'm going to just choose an option to be the featured image and there we go we've now added in our first piece of content let's publish this and once we've published that i want to just quickly go back to the property listings just so i can show you how this is all set up so now you can see there's our london heights our property type of apartment is listed inside there so as we start to flesh this out and add more properties in we can see very quickly and easily what type of property they are and if you add more taxonomies inside here you can set those up to display inside this section as well so you can make a really feature rich setup Finally, let me just quickly show you that quick edit option. So if we come in and choose to quick edit this, you'll see the property type, the custom taxonomy we set up is listed inside here. So I can very easily make changes without having to go in and edit the actual property itself. So let's just say I made a mistake. It's not an apartment. It's actually a flat. I can make that change, hit update and I'm done so much quicker and so much easier. So I'm gonna quickly go ahead now, add a couple more properties in so we can use that in the next step. When we take a look and actually start to display the custom content we've just created. Now, before we get stuck into this section, let me just quickly mention that while we'll be using Elementor Pro for this demonstration, you have many more options available to you. If you prefer using Divi, Beaver Builder, Beaver Thema, Brizzy, or many of the other page builders available for WordPress, the basic principle is very similar to what I'll be showing you today. Now, if you want to take a look at the WP Touch YouTube channel or website, you'll find tutorials on using dynamic data with many popular page builders covered there for your ease. Okay, let's fire up Elementor Pro's theme builder and kick this section off by building our first template to display our new custom post type. Our first template is the archive template, and this is where you can display a list of our new custom posts with the featured image, brief description, and a link to the full post or property itself. So what we need to do is go into the templates option and into our theme builder. Once we're inside here, we're going to choose the option to create an archive. So we'll select archive from the list and we'll add a new archive. All we need to do is give this a name. So we can say default property archive and we'll create the template. Now, if you want to, you could use one of these starting points for ease of use, but I want to show you how you can do it from scratch just so you have a better understanding of how the process works. So what we're going to do is we're going to close this down and then we can choose to pull in the archive title, archive posts and an author box if we want to. So let's start by just pulling the archive title. So we'll just drag and drop that onto our page and you can see that pulls in the title. So we can choose to edit this however we want to. So we'll just select this column and we'll just add a little bit of style into it. Now we've gone ahead, put the archive title in. Let's just go ahead and drop in the archive itself. So let's come back to our widgets, grab the archive post widget, drop that inside there. And as you can see, what's happening is it's basically just showing us the typical default WordPress post, the hello world post, which isn't what we want. Now this is just a preview, so don't worry too much about this, but it does make life easier to display what we want to actually see. So to deal with that, we're gonna come down to the little cog setting in the bottom left-hand corner, and we have the option for preview settings expand that and you can see this is currently showing us the recent posts we can change that and we can choose property types archive or properties archive so we're going to just say properties archive hit apply and preview and you see that now we'll load in a couple of our sample properties so now we've got something that's a little bit more in keeping with what we want to display now we can just configure this in various different ways so let's just select this entire section and let's add a little bit of breathing space above and below so 50 pixels above and below Let's just select the archive again. And now what we can do is we can change the skin or the look of this. This is currently kind of a bit boring. Let's just change this to something a bit more fresh and modern. Let's go for cards, for example. And that just looks a little bit cooler. And now we can go ahead and fine tune and configure all the various different settings inside here. So we might want to increase the quality of the image, adjust the ratio of the image on there. You can change exactly what's shown up. So for example, comments and things don't really make a lot of sense when it comes to selling properties. So we could disable that if we want to. You can easily come in, enable and disable the excerpt. So we could take that off there. And you can see we can just remove the read more, change it to a button, display the categories. So let's just change that to property types. 
and you see that now pulls up and says what type of property it is. So we can come in and configure this. I don't want to get too deep into how to configure it because I think most of it is fairly self-explanatory. Let's disable the avatar because that doesn't make a lot of sense. And let's add some pagination in because we currently only have three properties for sale. But if we had 30 properties, we need to have some way of letting people be able to move around. So let's just change the pagination, enable that. And even though you can't see anything at the moment, when we get more entries inside here, you'll start to display them. So that's the basics of creating the archive template. Now, if we hit publish, we can choose what condition. In other words, where and when do we want to use this specific template? So we'll say add a condition and you can see this by default says all archives. And that's perfectly fine. If all you're going to do is have archives of properties throughout your entire site, you could probably stick at doing this, but you can drill down a little bit more. So you could create different different kinds of templates for different kinds of archives. So let's open this up and you can see we're going to just choose the option for properties archive. It's worth bearing in mind if you are using Elementor to do this, that there is a hierarchy inside here. So in other words, if we choose properties archive, this template will flow down to everything underneath it. So if you want to change these other ones, you need to change them and set the relevant conditions up for it. However, I'm happy. We're going to say properties archive, leave that there and we'll say save and close. So now we've created the default archive for this particular custom post type. So that's that side of things done. Style away to your heart's content, but we've created what we need for the archive. Now there's a lot more you could do with Elementor Pro's archive pages and dynamic data, but for this guide, I want to cover the core skills. If you want to learn more, there's a playlist in the description full of tutorials covering more custom options. Check that out once you've wrapped up this guide. Now we have a list of custom posts created. The next thing we need to do is build the template for the actual post itself. Now this template is called the single post template. And as its name suggests, it's the template to display the content for a single individual post. In this case, one of our properties. Once again, we start off inside Elementor's theme builder for this example, and we're going to create a single post and we're going to add a new single post in, and we're just going to name this default property single template. And we'll just create the template. Again, you can see we have starting points that we could use, but for this example, I just want to show you how you can pull the relevant bits of data in and how we can start using some of the data that we've created through advanced custom fields. So let's just get past this and let's see what we have. If we look at the left hand side, we have nine different options currently, and these are the single post template options, the default options. We're not limited to those, but they do make a great starting point for most use cases. So let's just use those to get the ball rolling. We'll drag the featured image in, and that will pull in a featured image. Now, something isn't showing up inside there because again, we need to come in and tell it what we want to use as placeholder data. So we come down to the settings cog again, choose our preview settings, change this over to be property for the single post type. And we're gonna change this from all and we're just gonna do a search for London, for example. There's all London Heights. Hit apply and preview and that will then display some content. Now, like I say, this is just to display so we can have some data to work with. Let's just add a little bit of spacing around this. We'll just hop into advanced and we'll just add a little bit of space above and below. 50 pixels would be fine. So there's our dynamic data for the featured image. Really simple and easy to add. Come back to our widgets and we can do the same again. So we can grab our post title and drop that underneath there. And you can see, again, that pulls in the relevant data and we can easily come in and start to style this, make it a little bit more in keeping with what we want to create and come back out again. And now we can grab the post content and drop that inside there. So all pretty self-explanatory. There's nothing really complex about this. You are literally just dragging in a widget that relates to the content you want to pull in. Same thing goes to things like the post info. We can drag and drop that inside there and we can just take off anything that we don't think is relevant, like the author and so on. So all that's very, very easy to do. But how do we go about actually showing the relevant data that's from our custom post type or from our custom fields? Well, we can do that in a really simple way. We're going to come back up to the widgets. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab one of the normal basic widgets. So we'll say for the next thing we want to do is include the price. So let's grab that and drop that underneath the London Heights, the title. Set this to something like H3, and we'll just apply a little bit of style into this so it just looks a bit more in keeping. And there we go. We'll just adjust the size on that to something like 18. Okay. So that's the style side of things, but how do we get the dynamic information in there? Let's head back to our content and you can see we've got 
add your title here, which is great if you want to add that in. We also get the little dynamic tags in the top right hand corner and dynamic tags opens up a world of possibilities inside a tool like Elemental. However, you still have these options in Divi, in Beaver Thema, in Brizzy, even things along the lines like Bricks Builder have these same kind of features. So what I'm showing you here today will be applicable across most of those page builders. We're going to click to add dynamic tags and then we can see there's a ton of different options inside here. Scrolling right the way through. So you can start off, you've got post, like the post custom field, post date, excerpts, IDs, terms, times, loads of things. You can see we've got archives, site, media. If we scroll right the way down though, we also have an entry called ACF. And inside there we have ACF field. So we're going to click to open that up. And then we get this little wrench icon. And this is where we tell it what field we specifically want to reference. Click on there. Underneath the key, we currently have two options available, the price and the location. Let's just choose price. And you can see that will then bring in the price for us. So now we can use the advanced option and we can just drop in price and we'll put the pound sign in and now that makes a lot more sense so we've now created and added in a dynamic field and that's pretty cool but that's not all we can do we've already got the address so let's just use that in two different ways we're just going to come back up and we're going to drop in in this example just a simple text editor drop that inside there and we can do the same again there's our dynamic tags we can click scroll right the way through until we find the ACF fields, open that up, click the wrench icon, and this time we'll choose the location and we'll put in front of that property location. And there we go. So we now have property location is in London. Pretty cool. But it would be so much better if we had a map on here. So let's just scroll underneath here, go back to Elemental. We're going to find our maps widget I'm Going to drag and drop that into our design. And again, you see underneath the location, we have pre-filled data, but we have the dynamic tags option. So we can click inside there and we can come down. You see we've got ACF field and we have ACF number field. We're going to choose the ACF field, click the wrench icon, open that up, choose location, and then let that update. And that will then show us London. Pretty cool. Now to wrap this section up, we just need to set the condition for this template like we did with the archive. So we're going to click on publish, we're going to add a condition in, and you can see again, it says all singular. We're going to change that from there and we're going to come down and we're going to say properties. Choose that option. All is perfectly fine. And we'll hit save and close. This is now going to be assigned to all of our property type single posts. So let's just take a look now. We'll add the navigation into our site structure and then we'll take a look at the front end to see how this all works. So let's just add our new custom post type to our navigation structure. So we'll head into appearance and into menus. Inside there, we're going to create our custom menu, which is going to be the main menu. We'll leave home and sample page. That's perfectly fine. But you'll notice we don't actually have any way of being able to grab that actual link. So if we go to properties, for example, and property types, they're all inside there, but not just a sort of plain, straightforward way to go to view all the properties. So how do we deal with that? This is one of those things that causes a lot of confusion for a lot of people, and it's really, really simple to fix. We'll hop back over into CPT UI and we're in the add edit post types section. So as I showed you earlier on, if you want to make changes, we have to go to the edit post types, select that and there's properties. All we need to do is grab that slug. And this is why I said at the beginning of this entire video, this is why it's incredibly important because we're going to use this in various different places. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy that from there. We're going to head back over to our menu structure and we're going to create a custom link. Now inside there, we've got the URL. So inside here, we've got two ways we can use this. We can use it set up as a absolute link. In other words, we have our full domain. So bobsproperties.com forward slash properties, or we can use a relative link and that's relative to where you are inside the site. So all we need to do to do that is just put a forward slash. We'll paste in the slug and we'll put a forward slash at the end of it. It's up to you which way you want to work. The only thing to bear in mind is if you use this method and you're on a test setup on, for example, a local host, you're using something like uh, XAMP or AMP or something like that, this could lead to problems. So you might want to put the full link inside there. However, in most use cases, this is the easiest and most flexible way because it doesn't rely upon the domain name. So when you go from a test environment to a live environment, you shouldn't have any problems. Okay, so with that being done, we'll add that, but we'll put properties inside here first, and we'll say add to menu. And there's our properties. We'll position that there, 
and we'll create our menu structure. Finally, we'll say this is gonna be our primary and we'll save that again. Okay, so let's just hop over to the front end of the site and there's our properties menu. Click on that. There's our properties, our archive properties. And you can see there's all the different properties inside there. We can click and take a look at our first property. And you can see all the data we transferred over, including our map, is inside there. We can come back out, we'll try a different one, London Heights, for example. And you can see that now updates and shows us that particular property in the relevant location. You now have all the core skills to get started building your own dynamic data-driven websites using WordPress and a range of powerful tools. Now watch this video next to go beyond the basics and see how much you can achieve with these skills we've covered today. Now if you've made it this far in the video, why not give that thumbs up button a click? It really does help me out. And while you're at it, if you like the content, why not also click the subscribe button and slap the bell icon. But if you didn't get value from the video, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice as that seems to work pretty well too. My name is Paul C, this is WP Tets, and until next time, take care.